Hello and welcome to episode 72 of Prosperity by the Pint. I'm your host, Bryce Carter, certified financial planner, chartered financial consultant, and certified investment management analyst. This is the podcast where we talk, we talk about money, investing, business, and life success, all while having a cold beer. Cold beer of the week, the most important part, is it's again from Oddside Ale. I'm going to have a few of these uh, in the next couple of weeks because I picked up a variety pack. It's just called the Fuzzy IPA. In honor of the first beer brewed by Outside Ales in 2010, the beer is part of a limited run of throwback beers from the past. The Variety 4-Pack? Okay, well, that has to do with the 4-Pack that I brought, this variety. Let's give this a try. Cheers. Ooh. Fuzzy IPA is a winner. I like it. I like it a lot. This episode is going to be dicey. It's going to be hairy. It's going to be confrontational, perhaps a little bit, or at least uh, um, uh, controversial. It's the intersection of portfolios and politics, or politics and portfolios. So here's the deal. I'm a business person, and business people typically try to avoid uh, political conversations with their clients and the customers. I think that's changing a little bit now because things are so, uh, so <clears throat> I don't know, dynamic and so uh, heated that that people feel like they need to speak up for how they feel at all given times. Um, I, I, I try to avoid the conversation still with my clients as it relates to politics. I don't want it to get personal. Where I will talk about politics, however, is how it impacts their portfolio. So that's the that's the genesis of this episode is the intersection of, pop, of portfolios and politics. So in a presidential election year, and especially one like this where emotions are running high, I mean, uh, it's insults um, on both sides of the aisle, not not necessarily the candidates, but to a certain degree, uh, but also at, at voters um, and, and, and if you're supporting one candidate versus the other. So I, I just wanted to talk about the elements of the campaign. This isn't about personality. This isn't about uh, your, whether you lean left or right. This is about facts of their agenda that impact your investments. That's it, okay? So if we look at first President Trump's economic and tax policy, um, it's really not that in depth right now. It's not that bold. It doesn't call for a lot of changes. Um, it's essentially the status quo. Um, and to be fair, that has worked for him. The changes that they they made in 2017 with the tax uh, tax cuts and job act, um, some of the other things that they've rolled out with allowing uh, foreign uh, you know U.S. dollars that were made internationally to come back to the United States without. Uh, additional tax penalties. Those all, things all worked. I mean, before the pandemic, we had record low unemployment, wages were starting to rise, the economy was in good good shape. So you really don't need to have a brand new playbook about the, all the things that you're going to you're going to change when you're the incumbent and things went relatively well on at least the economic tax front. However, there was a couple things that they proposed. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, that is a set to expire after 7 years. So they want to make that permanent. They want to make the individual tax cuts there permanent. I think that that's a good move. Um, that would be a problematic uh, for whoever's getting elected at 2024, 2025, when that would be expiring because they would then take the blame for taxes rising. Um, they've also stated that they want to do a tax cuts 2.0, and they've described it as a middle income tax bracket, a tax cut, taking you know the 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 24 and 22 percent rates, which is really middle America, uh, down to 15 percent. That'd be a huge tax cut for for the average Americans. So those are all good things, I I think. Um, and then one thing that they do want to do that uh, that I'm not a big fan of is to make the Big cuts to the payroll tax. The payroll tax is Social Security tax, so that's what funds Social Security. They want to cut that, and they want to make that cut permanent. Uh, the Trump administration does, and, and I, I have, I know the math behind that. I don't think it's going to be that much of a boost to working individuals to not have to pay that tax, and I think it's going to be absolutely detrimental to Social Security. Uh, Social Security is already on, in rocky financial condition as it is. So if you go ahead and cut the revenue off, I mean, that's just going to you know create a huge problem. So I, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, it wouldn't have a huge positive uh, economic impact in the short term. And I think long term, it could have a major negative consequences. So not a big fan of that. 
Now, this is where we get to some of Biden's tax and economic plans uh, and how it impacts your portfolio, right? So this is a change, right? It's not status quo. It's not the incumbent we're talking about. This is the guy coming in and what they want to do, what his administration would want to do. So beer break first before we uh, shift into politics. They're going to want people to throw stuff at me. That is good. That's a great IPA. Gosh, that is lovely. All right. So the first thing is you have to remember, if you own stocks, you are part owner of that business. So if you own shares of Apple, Amazon, Google, uh, Power Integrated Systems, um, in any company, really, you are a part owner of that company. So if your company is more profitable, that means you are your, your company's worth more, aka when companies make more money, they go up in value. That's how that works, right? So that then your stock goes up and your portfolio goes up. So there's business, there's income, and then there's expenses. One expense that a business has is taxes. So Biden wants to raise the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. Now it used to be 35%. Trump cut it from 35 to 21. That was really good for the stock market. Now you can have a philosophy that corporations should pay more those greedy corporations. That's fine. Have that, have that view. That's great. I'm just telling you it's bad for stocks, right? And if you own stocks, it, it's bad for you, right? Because it makes the businesses that you own less profitable because taxes are nothing but an expense, okay? You may say they should have to pay more. That's fine. You can believe that. I don't believe that, but you can believe that. And basically, if, you're, if your company has to pay more money in, stock, in, in, in taxes, then it's worth less. Um, eliminate step up in tax bases. So this impacts non-qualified accounts. So right now, and, and they... Right now, if you have, if your parents had bought a hundred thousand dollars worth of stock, and it grew to two hundred thousand, they die and you inherit it. You there's a hundred thousand dollar gain there. You get a step up in basis, meaning if your parents would have sold the stock, they would have had to pay tax on all the gain. You do not have to pay tax on the gain if you sell it. So there is a little bit of a gray area here with them wanting to step up the basis, whether there's going to be a limit on that, if there's going to be an income limit, an asset limit, something like that. But basically, if you're investing in saving, which many people do, not just rich people, if you're investing in saving, you get this preferential treatment that you can you can pass your money onto your heirs and not have to have them pay tax on all of your gain, okay? So I'm not a big fan of that. It's not going to impact stack, stock values by any means, but it's going to make transferring stock to heirs less or more expensive. There you go. Repeal the ta Tax Cuts and Job Acts, uh, Job Act, so the Trump's tax plan, for only the wealthy, for only the wealthy. Okay, so this plan was called that it, it you know, unfairly impacts uh, uh, poor people, it unfairly impacts middle income people, and it is overly preferential to wealthy people. But it really doesn't. Uh, it's got a, it's the, the Trump tax plan, you know, doubled the standard deduction and about 88% of Americans ended up paying less in taxes. So if they if they if they repeal it completely, then everybody eighty eight percent of Americans are now going to be paying more in taxes. So what they've said is we only want to repeal it for the wealthy. Basically, for the top, Biden's plan calls for repealing the 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 cut only for those that are in the highest income bracket. So Trump took the highest income bracket from thirty nine point six percent to thirty seven percent. Biden wants to take it back up to 39.6. This, again, is not a huge impact on markets. Um, it's really only an impact on those, those ultra-wealthy people. But those people tend to be job creators. Those people tend to be investors. Those people tend to... Um, it, tend to grow the economy in many different ways. You can say the rich should pay more. That's fine. You can believe that. I'm just telling you, I don't, I don't think it's great for business growth. Uh, and business growth drives the economy. Um, and this is the weird thing about this is, is that the plan was so bad and so unfavorable towards middle income people, why do they only want to repeal it for one section of the the uh, the income bracket, and why do they only want to raise that bracket by 2.6 percent? You got a 37 percent bracket. Oh yeah, we're really going to get those rich people. We're going to tax them at 39.6 now. Watch out! Watch out! That's crazy talk, right? This just really isn't that big of a a, a big to me. It's not that big of a deal. Um, eliminate the income tax uh, income limit on Social Security tax. So right now you only pay. Um, Social Security tax on the first hundred and roughly one hundred and thirty thousand dollars worth of income. They want to say that you have to pay income tax on or Social Security tax on all of your income. Again, uh, this impacts higher income earners. Um, will it impact jobs? I don't know. Will it impact the market? Probably not that much. 
but the next one will. This is the big one. So the two big ones for me uh, on this are, are three. Raise corporate tax rate from 21 to 28. I think that's bad for stocks. Eliminate the step up on basis. I think that's bad for investors. And then this one, I think, is bad for investors and stocks. Um, and so the financial transaction task tax. Biden came out, uh, it was December 6th, 2019. I looked up the date so people can fact check me if they want on this. On December 6th, 2019, with an interview with CNBC, he said, I am absolutely in favor of a financial transaction tax. So what is a financial transaction tax? Well, Biden hasn't come out with the specifics on what he wants to do, but Bernie Sanders did. And he somewhat implied that he's a fan of that that plan. Well, that would apply a half a percent tax to every time you buy or sell a stock and a 0.1% tax for every time you uh, buy or sell a bond. It would also apply a tax every time you buy or sell a derivative. So what that means is that every time you want to auto invest, every time you're, you're, you're contributing monthly to your IRA or your 401k or your your um, stock plan, your in brokerage plan, you're looking at a situation in which you're paying a tax for buying, right? Just tax, 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 tax. The problem is your mutual funds are going to be paying this tax. In, in many cases, uh, 401ks have mutual funds. So they're going to be buying and selling stocks inside your mutual fund, right? Because you want them to do that. You don't want them just to just hold everything all the time. I mean, that's really, we could debate strategy on that. And it's not a bad strategy to buy and hold. But they're going to, every time they buy or sell something, they have to pay a half percent fee, a half percent tax. So who do you think is going to ultimately end up paying that fee? You as the investor that's doing a good job of saving and the mutual funds that you own. I mean, that's 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 it. So one, I think this is bad because it, it, it takes down liquidity in the markets, meaning people are going to be less willing to buy and sell, and therefore there's less liquidity, less, less options for investing. But also just the cost of it. You take a half a percent a year off of your returns, and that adds up over the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, right? So this is the worst one, of my, in my opinion, for investors. And I think raising the corporate tax rate is really bad for, for companies because, you know, again, it's an expense. It makes them less profitable. So you can, you can feel however you want to feel about candidates and, and their personalities. I mean, you can vote for somebody that you don't want to have dinner with because you like their policies, right? That's fine. But when it comes to politics in your portfolio, you should at least be aware of how different things impact your investments for the future. And so, you know, take it into consideration. I don't want to sway anybody's values. I don't want to sway anybody's opinions. I just want you to be aware of, of the plans that these people have um, and make make your decisions in part based on how their economic and tax plans impacts you as a saver, an investor, uh, uh, and uh, whatever else you are, a husband, a wife, uh, uh, you know, a parent, a grandparent, right? So that's going to do it for this week's episode of Prosperity by the Pine. Don't forget to subscribe, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen. That's where we are. Cheers. The topics that I discuss in this podcast are meant to be general information and educational only. I'm not giving you specific advice because I don't know you personally. In order to give you specific advice, you should work with an advisor or someone that can learn your specific situation and give you advice that applies to you. If I talk about a specific security, please keep in mind I'm not recommending that security. And don't forget, investing involves risk. When you invest, there's always the possibility of losing capital, which is why you should consult with a qualified, licensed financial advisor prior to investing.